Good evening, everyone. What well, is indeed a pleasure to be here at Laurel High School, where the home of the tornadoes, and we are winning team here at the Laurel High School in between the bricks. And you know what that Laurel High School that that was a cheer that the cheerleaders will always do. We believe you can do it. We believe you can do it. And you know that cheer is really what motivated me and catapulted me in this election because I just simply believe that Laurel can do it. In the mail this week, you probably have received a brochure. And in this brochure, you, you have seen our I Believe in Laurel action plan. Because we're about action. A vote for Trey Chin is a vote for action, and I want you to have this in your hands because I want you to know exactly what we're about. You don't have to think about it in a 30 second commercial on the TV or radio. I want you to know what that plan is all about. And I want you to know and discuss with your family and friends, rationally and logically, who's the best candidate for the job. And I believe that that's Trey Chin. Now, the number one issue that we may have facing the city of Laurel is, you may say, water line and sewer line. That's a huge issue. Our streets are decaying. That's a huge issue. Drainage issues. That's a huge issue. But in fact, the number one issue is how you want to pay for that, the revenue. How are you going to pay for that? That's why my platform on economic and retail development is vital. Because I think that we're taxed enough already. Because if we use the tax dollars that we spend out of our check in other cities, buying things in other cities, whether it's at restaurants or shopping, if we spend that in borrow, our sales tax revenue will go through the roof. We have to figure out how we're going to attract retail development in Laurel. A trade chain agenda, a trade chain administration would be proactive in attracting economic and retail development into our city. And planning and, and, and putting into place, putting into place zoning, planning and putting in place ordinances that are business friendly. Because we can't just sit back and wait for it to happen. We're going to have to take a stance and we're going to have to fight for those things and say Laurel is on the map. And then we want your industry, we want your restaurant, we want your retail location, your shopping center to locate in Laurel, Mississippi. And we want to be a mayor's office that's about that. That's why my initiative of more open businesses, that's the mayor's office of resources and enterprise for encouraging and pursuing the opening of new businesses. As the mayor's office, a business owner doesn't have to go to three different places to figure out if they want to open up and sit along. We want to be that business on the concierge, and we want to be that current business on the concierge to figure out, if you come to the mayor's office, we'll figure out the rest. All we need is your interest. We'll figure out the zoning. We'll figure out the special exemption. We'll figure out, uh, we'll, we'll figure out the permit. We'll do that. Just come to the mayor's office. I want to be that working mayor that makes the difference. Now, we want to talk about how do we do these vital issues of re for retail development, and yet we drive to those places on roads that are messing up our cars. We drive on roads that you see a water leak or a cave in. It's going to be vital that we concentrate on our infrastructure. Our infrastructure is important as we attract businesses, as we attract homeowners to the city of law. Now, how do we pay for that? Soon we will have the expiration of the one cent sales tax that will, that will finish bond repayment. We're going to pay for that because we're going to ask the legislature, we're going to ask Ms. Scott when she goes back there, that we want her to pass legislation and reauthorize us. <laughs> we want to ask her to pass legislation and reauthorize us. That penny that opens it up, we're already paying and we're saying that we're going to pay us for penny. Let's, let's let that penny do some good at fixing holes instead of fixing baseball fields. That's what we want in the city of Laurel. We need to put our money to do some of the things that really matter. And that's sewer lines, that's water lines, that are streets. But the other thing is that we don't want to keep throwing money down the hole. Too many times we've seen people that come, that they've seen work trucks come to a location three, four, five times, and that is totally inefficient. We can't keep throwing money down the hole. That's why I want to implement a three strikes and, and replace rule. And that within our budget that we're already paying, we already set aside, that if we go to that location within 10 feet, that we're going to replace a 10 feet section of the water line. That's going, that's going to help improve our infrastructure because if you
you and Country Club Hills, Ms. Jackson, you complain about this many times, and that when you when they come through the water leak two feet over, there's another water leak coming. It happens on Queensburg Avenue, it happens on Seventh Avenue. I tell you, it happens all over the city. You've seen it all too many times. And you said to yourself, they just was there. Let's fix that. We're going to be an administration that's concentrating on fixing problems instead of patching them. Now, in this brochure, you're going to see my initiative, my re-up initiative. That's very important because that's going to be our reorganization. We want to re-up Laurel. That means we want to elevate and go higher. How are we going to do that? We want to review all personnel and operations for efficiency and effectiveness. We want to retrain at every level for a, to increase technical and managerial skill sets. We want to reestablish a more centralized administration. We want to revise order system to be more business friendly and current. Revamp zoning to be better aligned with our current and future growth. And, and almost most importantly out of all of that is where you're living at, we want to clean up, paint up, and fix up neighborhood hardship. The city of Laurel and the Trace Administration want to work with your churches, want to work with you, and move in Laurel. I just ask that just like in, the, in between the bricks when I went to high school here, I just ask that you believe. I ask that you believe in Trey Chin. I just ask that you believe in the city of Laurel. I ask that you reimagine where we can go and you step forward and you make a difference. Experience matters, but what Laurel needs is someone to make a difference. And in Ward 7, I made a difference. In Laurel, I'll make a difference. I tell you, we need a person that's about moving Laurel forward. I thank you so much and I ask you on May 7th in the Democratic primary, elect Trey Chin because he believes in Laurel like you do too. Thank you so much. My name is Anthony J. Hudson. I'm the stepfather to Warren and father of three. I worked for CP Rail Systems until I was diagnosed with a terminal illness. I could not sit and just die. So I began to work in my community and city government. I must have done something right because Jesus removed that disease from my body. Since time is short, I will get into the question asked, what is the most pressing issue in law? The most pressing issue to me is to get an administration and logical counsel that will work for the people and not the businesses that they do business with. My first goal as mayor would be to get the Boys and Girls Club up and running. The other theme part, complete the 2008 water distribution and sewer system collection plan. This includes new water lane, sewer lane, and fire hydrants in most areas. I would be closely involved with our school system to make sure the top teachers are hired and ensure that children with special needs get what they deserve. I will also begin a transit system for the city of Long. I will walk, talk, photograph, and most importantly, listen to you, the citizens of our nuisances of your neighborhood, as well as the things that matter to you and your family now and in the future. I will repeal the three water, sewer, and garbage increases, along with repealing the 1.5 mill increase, I will hire qualified police officers. I will complete the annexation of Pinnock and allow all citizens to pay $25 a month on all old fines. I will reconstruct our municipal court, enact an ordinance requiring all major corporations to pay one half of their tax owed to the municipality, and I will pay it on the streets with concrete. I will enter into a contract with Comcast to air all council meetings, reinstate the two-day per week garbage pickup, enclose two city pools, and act an ordinance exempting all small businesses with a, with a capital of less than $50,000 from tax once a year. And I will be hands on with all complaints dealing with any department under my watch, including but not limited to the law police department. And by the way, we need to take back our water department. This is where I grew up and where I went to public school. This is where I have lived a big portion of my life. That's why I offer my candidacy for mayor of the city of law. I have been involved with our local government and I have a lifetime of experience that counts and I want to, and I want to put it 
to work for this city. Yes, you have to have four, yes, you have to have four votes, but if you get in a plane, you'll get those four votes. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. First of all, I'd like to thank the Chronicle and WDAM for being here for sponsoring this forum. To the other candidates, good evening to you guys. I am a graduate of R.H. Watkins High. We call it R.H. Watkins, we call it Law Island, class of 1974. I graduated from Jackson State in 1978 with a BA in sociology. And I came right back to Watkins to work here as a jobs coordinator social worker in 1979, and then went on to Staten and worked as a social worker in that program too. I'm the son of the late Reverend Alphys Jordan and Vera Jordan. We've been here all our lives. I'm great and born here, and I love law. And for 29 years and eight months, I served as an employee of the city of law. Now, in that at the time, I've seen a lot and I've learned a lot. That's why I'm running to be the next mayor of this city. Because I prayed about it, God spoke to me, and I believe he did with all my heart to continue service. I retired October 1st, and people say, why are you going to jump from the frying pan into the fire? I said, well, I just have a calling. I want to serve, I want to continue to serve. I'm also the member of Second Baptist down by in the War Cellar area, across Mo Park, where I serve as trustee and treasurer by church. I'm married to Rita Terry Jordan. We have three children. I have three adult children. Listen, I have a formula to work toward achieving success. And there are three major human components here. The city administration, the city employees, and the citizens. Those formulas in that success or achieving success is organization, responsibility, cooperation, education, accountability, prioritization, Respect, experience, information, trust, communication, training, firmness, diligence, consistency, persistency, loyalty, and hard work. Listen, the powers that be cannot run or set the agenda for this city. This city belongs to the citizens. It's not good government. It's not fair for all of our citizens, and you know what I'm talking about. The trust factor is gone in our government. Look at this audience. People don't trust government anymore. People don't vote anymore. That's why it's nobody here. We have to get trust back in government. We have to make sure that our city officials that you elect trust government. Trust government. That's why people don't vote. There are rules and regulations, policies and procedures that some government officials don't follow. If the citizens are witnessing this, then they won't trust government. How do we get cooperation between ourselves? This cannot be a favor situation. Favors create problems. Let's work on it. Listen, let's work on the cost of living raised for our employees on a percentage basis according to their pay grade and rate. No promises, no guarantees, just work hard toward them because our employees are an important asset to us. And we got to make sure we're doing fair by them so they can service the city like the city deserves to be serviced. We've got traffic issues. Many of our streets need posting, speed limit signs. People drive up and down some of these streets like mad people. We need to slow them down. We need to post signs. Make sure we're doing it. Some people are not going to like this because they might think it's infringing upon freedom of speech. But we need to get rid of citizen forum. All you're doing is getting up there talking, and the council cannot respond. My plan is to have a citizens' action committee. That where three to five representatives from each ward will form, and you will pick those people. And then you will meet with the council person, the mayor, the CEO, or whoever else is involved, the directors of the department. And then we will discuss these issues that you may have. It doesn't need to go, no offense, it doesn't need to go on WDAM, it doesn't need to go on the Chronicle, embarrassing the city like that. We need to make sure that we are working in a cooperative spirit in order to try to get our problems correct and do it the right way. We're just not doing that. We also need to make sure that all of our employees are doing the very best job they can. We need to make sure they are properly managed and have the best equipment they can use. 
I work hard to ensure all of our department personnel have the education, training, skills, and equipment to do their job safely and efficiently. We need more youth programming, more businesses, industries, sit-down restaurants where we're comfortable and can enjoy a meal, and of course, jobs, jobs, jobs. And one of the council people that are running suggested that we have public transportation, and we know how important it is, especially for our elderly people or those people that don't travel. How? Grants, loans, and other avenues of funding. Let's stop wasting money on companies and agencies making financial assessments of our city. Can't we do this? If our sales taxes are increasing, then let's put them to work. We all know we have a court system issue. And we need to make sure that our law enforcement is on point. We need to make sure we have a marketing strategy for this city to bring businesses and industries here. And we also need to hold landlords accountable for these run-down properties that they're renting out and people are paying rent and they're not fixing. So in closing, I want to be your next mayor. It's time to move law forward. Let's move law forward together. And please, whomever you vote for, just make sure you go vote. Thank you, and God bless you. Good evening, everyone. I want to tell you how much I appreciate the good citizens of Laurel coming out in this weather, riding over some of the roughest streets in the universe to get here for me to tell you why I think I'm going to make you the best mayor for Laurel. I want to introduce myself. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Ken Keyes. I was born about three blocks over here on 11th Street. I have lived in Laurel my entire life. I got a great education in Laurel City Schools, walked right across this stage, got my diploma in 1977. Larry Coleman, Sandra Summerall, some of them did well with me, and I appreciate the education opportunity that I received here in this city. I left here and went to JCJC for two years, then on to Southern Miss for another two years, and uh, came back. I never really left, but I went to work for Chris Posey Chevrolet in 1981 as his uh, first assistant service manager there. And then in 1985, <clears throat> the uh, dream of my life came true. I got hired at the Laurel Fire Department. I was so proud of my new job, and I spent a little over two decades there. I retired a few years ago. I worked my way all the way up to do ship captain. And in the course of doing that, I got to know a lot of people. I got to help a lot of people along the way with the toy program when their houses burned, when they had a car wreck, Ken Keyes was there. And I'm gonna be here a lot longer, I hope. Uh, I worked and got my state contractor's license while most firemen have an extra job. I was no exception. And I uh, started building some houses, some subdivisions, and developing commercial property right here in Laurel, Mississippi. I worked with the Planning Commission, the Zoning Commission, Public Works, uh, the city clerk, all the departments, and folks I know firsthand their strengths and weaknesses. And I promise you as the mayor of Laurel, I will help strengthen those departments and extinguish the weaknesses. I want you to know that we have almost a $20 million budget right here for the city of Laurel. Folks, that's big money. It's your $20 million in taxes. And the city of Laurel has to be run like the $20 million business that it is. I think we can all agree that Laurel needs some help, and I folks, I'm the one here to help you. Uh, we have several problems. They asked what was the most pressing problem for Laurel. We've got so many pressing problems, I couldn't distinguish it. So I want to list about four of them for you. And uh, our tax base, we all know our tax base is dwindling. Uh, when the hospital goes over here and buys a Walmart building and takes $80,000 off of our tax rolls, and then as our people, our citizens, get older, they get to a tax break when they reach 65. We've got to have some, and they deserve that, by the way. Uh, <clears throat> we've got to have a way to get those taxes back on the road. And they said, well, Ken, what is your plan? Well, my plan is to open the doors of City Hall for business. We're going to be back in business when I'm your mayor. We're going to remove the red tape and the bureaucracy at City Hall that when people come in here to locate a business, they don't have to jump through all the hoops that's set forth by them now. And I'm a product of that. As a developer, I was the one that developed the land for Buffalo Wild Wings. Our 
two motels over there. Currently involved in the one right up here by uh, Walmart where Raisin Cane's and Dairy Queen and Murphy Oil. It's been a five-year lingering ordeal. It should have taken about a year to do that, but because of the red tape at City Hall, it's, it's we in our fifth year now. <clears throat> uh, I want to talk about United Water, folks. Of the $20 million that we have on our books this year, $5 million is going to fund United Water. Folks, that's a company that's not even based in Laurel, Mississippi. They're from Delaware. There's no reason, absolutely no reason, we can't get those employees back under the city banner, provide them the benefits of the city, and have them to answer to us. I promise you, I'm going to get my hands around that contract, and we're going to see what we can do about it. The other deal is that you've heard all night is the streets and uh, the infrastructure. We have wore that out. Uh, I have to say this city administration has gone and borrowed money, and I think we've borrowed all the money that we can, as taxpayers, can afford to pay. I wouldn't feel comfortable about going to ask you to pay one more dime towards taxes. But that course has already been charted. And they're making some repairs, and all I can promise you is that I'll get my hands around those contracts, I'll keep my finger on the pulse of it, and I will make sure that we get dollar for dollar what we pay for it. The other uh, issue is, um, I lost my place again. <laughs> like I said, we're going to restore some business to City Hall. The other thing is I want to work with our EDA. I don't want to see another business locate outside the city of Laurel when we've got a chance to locate them here. I know Sandy Holofield and Mitch did it very well. I want to make sure that we're getting what we're paid for. We pay uh, quite a bit of money into the EDA, and I want to make sure we're getting the best return on our dollar for that. The other deal is I want to do something about our police department. We've got a good police department, but some nights we have as little as five officers on the street. And I want to do an uh, auxiliary police department. I've got about 25 people that are certified law officers that are ready to come on and help us as an extra set of eyes and ears. I'm not looking for somebody to hide in the bushes and try to catch you going to Mason Night and write you a ticket. What I want to do is clean up some of this gang activity and some of the drugs that are killing our community. <clears throat> like I said, I was in the Buffalo Wild Wings deal and a couple more commercial establishments and uh, we were able to build you a new Popeyes here. And we helped locate Topers here. And I just want to tell you that <clears throat> as your mayor, you will not have to go through the city administrator to get to me. I will be accessible to you. I will have you will have my ear, and I hope that I will have yours. I would consider it a total honor and a pleasure to get to serve you the next four years as your mayor. And I want to say this in closing. There are people that want things to happen, and there's another section of people that hope things are happening. And there's another section that make things happen. And I promise you, as a mayor of Laurel, I will do everything in my power to make some plays happen. I thank you for your time. Thank you for coming. God bless you, and God bless the city of Laurel, Mississippi. Yeah. This is a campaign for mayor. So anything I say is in that context as campaign for mayor. I believe the most pressing issue for Laurel is complacency. We just don't care anymore. And we've got to get back to where we care about our city again. I believe that is the number one issue facing the city of law. The streets, the sewer, the water, all that can be repaired if we can deal with the complacency. If we can get enough people that care again, we can do something about all the other issues that we've got. I've been on the city council for 16 years. I've served on most of the committees on the council. I've served as acting mayor on several occasions. And I'm the only person on this panel that will be ready from day one to lead the city. We have people talking about 
they want to set your budget for the city. When in fact, they have not set a budget for a household. As a fact, they don't have a household, but they want to set your budget. It's not personal, it's a campaign. Beginning July the 1st, I will begin to run the city more like a business. With the sole purpose being to serve the taxpaying citizens of all in a more professional manner. As I begin to implement my plans for this city, I will appoint and hire the most qualified people for the key positions. I will be a hands-on mayor. I will create a culture of accountability for the employees and the management of city affairs. In my administration, we will always remember that we work for you, the citizen taxpayer. There are many issues facing the city of Ball, one of those being the water, the sewer, and the streets. I have a plan to replace the water and sewer lines and repave the streets. Every year in every ward, replace sewer lines, replace water lines, replace streets. Every year in every ward until it's finished. We will identify the worst streets in each ward and begin to repair those beginning in the first year. And we will clean up the city of law. Our existing businesses need more help from the EDA and from the city. Our existing businesses are the backbone of our city. We need to make sure we're taking care of our existing businesses. We need to find out what they need and we need to supply what they need to them. We need to work closely with the EDA to ensure that the existing businesses in Laurel are taken care of in the manner that they need to be taken care of. And if they're not being, then this administration will do that. We will work closer with the Board of Supervisors. And as we work closer with the Board of Supervisors, we will share in the projects that need to be taken care of in the city. And by working closer with the Board of Supervisors and having the Board of Supervisors take more projects on in conjunction with the city, that in turn will save the city taxpayers money by having the city and the county working on certain projects. I will develop and implement a 25-year comprehensive plan that will serve as the strategic blueprint for development and growth. Successful and sustainable growth happens with an intentional plan, and we will have an intentional plan. And we will clean up the city. I have a proven record of making the difficult decisions that are in the best interest of the city. You may not have agreed with all my decisions, but they were well thought out and made in the best interest of the city. I will be the mayor of all the citizens of the city of law, regardless of your skin color, where you reside, your political persuasion, your economic condition, your religious beliefs, your marital status, or any other qualification, I am the only candidate prepared to lead this city from day one. One candidate for mayor speaks about the experience in the legislature. But experience in the state legislature is not the same as experience with the nuts and bolts in a municipal government. Both of them are experienced. Both are public service but they are different. There is a vast difference between the workings of the city of law and the workings in the state legislature in Jackson. I urge you as the voters 
to ask a simple question. Where is the bacon? Where is the bacon that has come from Jackson for Laurel, Mississippi? Not for Jasper County, not for Clark County. Where is the bacon that has come to Laurel, Mississippi? It is important that you not only listen to <coughs> what's being said, but examine the claims. Because I can tell you anything, but the fact of the matter is, as the old saying goes, the proof is in the pudding. I am committed to representing the city on a countywide, statewide, and national level in a professional manner that exemplifies the pride that you and I all share for the city of Laura, and we will clean up this city. On May 7th, vote for the only person that can begin July 1st running this city, Johnny McKee. And we thank the Lord for the opportunity to be here tonight. And we want to thank the Chronicle and WDAM for allowing us this chance. Uh, all of the candidates for mayor and all of the candidates for city council, we want to commend you all for putting yourselves forward for public service. Let me say, uh, you asked uh, what was the most pressing issue. There are many issues that are pressing here in this city. But I believe that we need to move in a different direction. And I feel that I bring a skill set, a comprehensive skill set, that you will be able to consider as voters. I worked nine years with the Employment Service as an employment interviewer, where we did personnel management, referral, as an employment counselor, where we train, put people in training, as well as on the job and vocational programs. Then I went on to Ellison State School where I worked as a nursing home administrator. And as you know, the Laurel, City of Laurel has a $20 million budget. I supervised over 100 employees at Ellison State School. We had an income of over $5 million in our unit year. Then I went on to the House of Representatives, where I have served 20 years. Somebody said tonight, where's the bacon? So open your eyes and look at that S curve. $26 million. Look over there at Masonite with the new pro off the road that brings you in there. For Masonite, look at Wayne for the brother that brings you into Wayne. Look at this project that's taking place on 15 right now. Look at the monies that we brought to the junior college, to Ellisville State School. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I represent Jasper and Clark County. So I'm bringing things everywhere to the people that I represent. Now, I believe that the city needs somebody with a new vision. I believe that we could be more business friendly. We have the highways, we have the rail, we have the airports, we have the industrial parks. We have all of the amenities that we need to bring in industrial prospects. What we have to do, the, the Board of Supervisors have proven that they are willing to put together tax incentives that are needed to bring industrial prospects here. We have to resolve to do the same thing. When I'm elected mayor of the city of Laurel, I will bring the Mississippi Department of uh, uh, Authority, Development Authority as well as our Economic Development Authority together so that with our new city council, we will be able to develop the tax incentive package that we will need through resolution so that we can go out and look for industrial prospects we will be able to tout what we have here already as uh, amenities that any business would be glad to have. The other thing that we need to do that will eliminate dropouts, poverty, that will build homes, that will do everything that we want to do to move this city forward is to get jobs. In order for us to do that, we must take our underemployed and our 
our underemployed and work with our workforce development as well as the junior college to develop a certificated program for competencies in reading, math, and science. They will be platinum, gold, silver, and bronze medal. This will be part of our package that we will be able to present to people who are interested in coming here uh, with their businesses. There are a lot of areas in Mississippi that they have uh, people that they can train. But we don't want people that are just trainable. We want people who are competent. So as companies retool and, re and change, our people will be able to be retrained and they will be able to keep their jobs. Then beautification of this city is very important. You know, as an economic development tool, our entryways are critical. So we've got to work to beautify our entryways and to our city, whether it's through landscape, whether it's through art pieces, and the same thing for our neighborhoods. We should have more de decorative entry points for our city. As you know, the first impression is the lasting impression. And then they talked about bacon again. I want to say to you that I am the only one sitting at this table who has served with Governor Phil Brown, Senator Roger Winter, and Senator Stephen Palazzo. And you know that it takes networking. Everybody has heard we've had a $1.4 trillion cut, and now with the sequester, it's going to take networking and relationships to bring back the bacon to Laurel, Mississippi. It's not what you know, baby. It's who you know. So I just want to ask you, on Tuesday, May 7th, vote for an experienced leader who has the temperament and the expertise to move this city forward. I ask you on May the 7th, vote for a proven leader. One that doesn't just talk the talk, but somebody that walks the walk. On Tuesday, May the 7th, vote Omiria Scott, Mayor of Laurel, Mississippi. Thank you so very much.